What's up, YouTube? So real quick, I'm going to take a few minutes. I'm going to explain to you guys a few myths and a few tricks that I've learned about working with air compressors, especially smaller air compressors, um, because as you know, I'm getting ready to paint this car with this little air compressor. So the first myth I want to address, which is the reason why I'm doing it this way and the reason why I'm even showing you guys that I'm going to paint it with this is the first myth that you have to have a 60 gallon compressor or better to paint a car. Now, ideally, that's what you want. That ideally is what you want. But even the guys that got 60 gallons will say 60 gallons is not enough. You need 80 gallons. There's always going to be people telling you that your compressor can't do it. You need bigger. Now, the number one rule when buying a compressor is buy the biggest one that you can afford. That's always the number one rule when shopping for an air compressor. Buy the biggest compressor that you can afford. Now, for me, I can't afford a bigger compressor than this, but what happened is, is I'm renting a spot that does not have 220. Um, it's wired to another building, so it's not even worth it. I'm just here for however long, but for right now, I've only been here like two weeks, so it's not worth it to invest into a 220 into somebody else's building right now. So for me, I needed a good smaller compressor that will work off of a 120 amp outlet. And that's why I have this. Um, if you have 220, sure, go ahead and get a 60 gallon, go whatever. But if you don't, do not allow that to discourage you from being able to try to paint your own car that's how you learn you gotta make the most out of what you have now i've painted cars with smaller compressors before i even painted my van i might even throw that up on the screen but i even painted my van with a 30 gallon craftsman air compressor the whole van i'll put the video up but the thing is is that when you're selecting a compressor, you got to pay attention to the specs because these are some of the, the myths that you're going to come across. Now, this compressor, if you look right here, it says five horsepower. It's a lie. A lot of these smaller compressors you guys are going to see um, for sale, whether it's Craigslist, eBay, wherever you're going to look, you're always going to see these compressors that say five horsepower, six horsepower, whatever the case is, it's a lie. You cannot get five horsepower out of the 120 uh, plug. It's not going to give you enough. They're running on 15 amps, 20 amps. You're not going to get enough to power five horsepower. See, actually, back in the early 2000s, a lot of air compressor companies got sued. There was like a big class action lawsuit against um, a bunch of the manufacturers, including Campbell Wholesale, um, for false advertising. What, what they did is they always advertised these compressors, all of these for the home users, all the 120 compressors, they've always been advertised at peak horsepower. That's how they got the five because this motor is capable of doing five horsepower but it's not going to do five horsepower off a 110 outlet it's not going to do it it's honestly putting out about two horsepower so what happened was these companies were all advertising these compressors it was like a conspiracy they were all doing it and they all you guys see it they probably still do it you know it's, come on this is small money to these big companies but if you guys look at the compressors you probably have or compressors online, you're going to still see house compressors or home garage compressors that are like this size, whether it's 20 gallons, 30 gallons, whatever it is. They're going to say five horsepower, six horsepower. I'm telling you right now, it's not the truth. It is not the truth. There's a whole thing. If you care to look it up, there was a whole lawsuit about it. Um, but the thing is, is that because the five horsepowers are putting out maybe about two horsepower, two and a half horsepower, you do want to aim high. 
Don't buy a compressor that says two horsepower because you may only be getting a half a horsepower. You only be getting one horsepower. So you want to aim high. But the only way to get five out of this is to wire it for 220, which I'm not going to do. But I have learned a few tips over the years uh, from the different times I did have to use small compressors on how to squeeze a little more CFM out of it. I'm going to tell you the main one that works. This works for me. Regardless of what it says on the CFM, which is important too, but I've always been able to squeeze out a little bit more just by doing this. This right here is where the air comes in. So the compressor's basic function is to suck air in here, compress the air, fill the tank, the motor pumps, runs the pump, you get it in your hose. Simple. What I do is this. I take this off, like that. Take off the filter. Put the filter back in, that's it. I might put a rubber band on it or something to keep it in place, but that's it. Just like that, you've increased your CFM. That's not a myth, it's true. Let me tell you why. This is essentially like the air cleaner on your car. You see it? It's all closed up, except for this one hole. So when this is all sealed up and the compressor's running, it's sucking all the air through this. And see what happens? It comes on the inside and then it goes through the filter, but all the air is entering this way. There's nothing else here. It's all closed up. So it's just like the air cleaner on your car. And for the same reason we put cold intakes on the car, the same reason we might put the open filter on the car, is to increase horsepower. That's what I'm doing today. I'm just hot rodded the compressor. That's it. That one little, it's, it's, it's perfectly free. You just pull it off, make sure that stays on. You can put a rubber band on it, it'll be fine. Um, and that's it. You just put that, take this off, and automatically the compressor is taking in more air. It's going to fill faster, and it's going to give you a few more CFM. Now listen, it's not going to be, it's not going to double, but it is going to increase um, because it's still running off the same motor. So you will notice a difference in how quick your compressor will fill up uh, once you remove that now here's the other thing that I want to tell you another tip uh, for making these compressors work when you have to paint a car underneath all these compressors every compressor there's a drain valve right whenever you're doing something big like this especially a paint job what you want to do is open the valve a little bit not enough where it's hissing and blowing out, but just enough to where you see that water dripping out the bottom of the tank. The reason for that is because if you're painting a whole car, this compressor is going to get hot. When it gets hot, it's going to build up that heat is going to make condensation happen in the tank. That's where the water comes from. Water gets in your line, we automatically know that's going to ruin the paint. It's going gonna, it's gonna to definitely mess up your paint job. So, of course, filters and all of that is still important. I'm not telling you don't do that. What I'm saying is if you leave the bottom of your compressor, and you guys can do this on the big ones, too, if you want to, leave the valve on the bottom of the compressor cracked a little bit just so it drips, just so the water drips out, but not where you hear it hissing out air. Just do it to the point where the water drips out. When that happens... It's stopping the water from accumulating in your tank. So this way, the whole time you're painting, is dripping out that water. So any little bit of water that's left will get caught by the filter or whatever. But that's more so important with these little tanks because of the fact that they do fill up fast and the air does suck it out of there fast through the hose. So you want to make sure that that way you don't have to worry whether or not the filter in the line is going to catch all of the water that's accumulated in the tank. All right. The other thing I want to talk about real quick. I'm almost done, YouTube. The other thing I want to talk about, a lot of people with smaller compressors will sometimes take another compressor and use it just for the air tank. They'll buy a broken compressor and you'll use it for the air tank. That way your compressor doesn't have to run as much because you have doubled your air storage. In theory, that is true. That's exactly what it did. But let me tell you what you have to look for before you decide to do that. You have to check the tag 
on your motor to see what kind of motor you have. Let me explain. On this motor right here, see where it says duty? Right there. See them words C-O-N-T? It's continuous, right? Not every compressor has a continuous motor. And basically what that means is that this motor was built to run continuously. It will run, run, run. This is an extreme duty compressor. It's made to run hard. Not every compressor is built that way, especially in the 120 um, class. Some of these compressors, their duty cycle is different. Some of those compressors may have the motor where it can run 75% of the time, but you have to stop and let that compressor cool off. You'll have to stop, let it cool off for 25% of the time. So you have to check your own motor to see what it is that you have. But you might have a motor that's not made to run continuously. Now, the reason why that's important is because the motor that's on the tank of the compressor that you have, the motor that's on the tank of the compressor that you have, the issue is it's made to fill that tank, right? It's made to fill that tank. This is made to fill a 26 gallon tank, although it's continuous. Sorry about that phone ringing. So this motor can run continuous so I can expand it to a bigger tank if I chose to. But if you don't have a separate storage, well, if you, I'm gonna say, if you don't have a continuous motor, but you're trying to add a separate storage tank and you do, you're gonna burn your motor out in half the time that you normally would because now that motor is working twice as hard trying to fill two tanks. You guys follow what I'm saying? Your motor, your compressor is made to work together. This is all made to work together. If I throw another tank on here, because of the motor that's on here, it would be okay. It would take longer to fill, but it would be okay. The motor would be fine. If you don't have a continuous motor, you're gonna burn out your, your motor. You're gonna shorten the lifespan of your motor because you're working it too hard. You're not giving it the cool down time that that motor was designed to have. So that's another thing that you guys have to understand is just because you see videos of people like I added and it works and it's fine, it, it'll work, but you're shortening the life of your compressor. So make sure you have a continuous motor that can power up and, and fill up both without burning out your motor. Because what's the point in buying an extra $20 tank if you got to buy another $200 motor? doesn't make sense all right so that's it nice simple trick so yes you can paint with a small mo your small compressor you just have to make sure that the motor that on, that's on the compressor that you're going to use is up to the abuse that you have to do or you have to paint the car in panels now this car is going to be painted pearl so i'm going to walk the car with this you heard what i said i'm going to walk this car with this compressor, no extra torch tank, nothing. This compressor, just how you see it, is going to paint this car. All right. Next video, guns. We're going to discuss guns and making guns work with this compressor. How to choose the right gun to work with a small compressor. All right. I'll catch you guys on the next one.